What do I think? It's a match. What? <laughs> you agree? I agree. <laughs> Daddy, you made me a happy man. Good. <laughs> Let's drink on it. Why not? <laughs> to you. Uh, no, my friend. To you. To the both of us. To our agreement. To our agreement. <laughs> to our prosperity, our good health and happiness, most important. To life, to life, l'chaim, 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 to life. Here's to the father I'm trying to be. Felvi an melech sein, l'chaim, 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 to life, to life, l'chaim, 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 to life. Life has a way of confusing us, blessing and bruising us. Drink lechaim to life. God would like us to be joyful, even, even though, though our hearts lie panting on the floor. How much more can we be joyful when there's really something to be joyful for? So sign mit glick lechaim to title my daughter, my wife. It gives you something to think about, something to drink about. Drink Lechaim to life. To lays a wolf to Tevye. To Zaitel, your daughter, my wife. Features be pleasant ones, not like our present ones. Drink Lechaim to life, to life. Lechaim. Lechaim, Lechaim, so sein. Let's live another day. Drink lachaim to life. We'll raise a glass, glass and sip a drop and schnapps in honor of the great good luck that favored you. We know that when good fortune favors two such men, it says to reason we deserve it too. To us and our good fortune, be happy, be, be healthy, healthy your life. life. And if our good fortune never comes, it's to whatever comes. Drink Lachayim! To life! Hello and welcome to tonight's very special anniversary of Fiddler on the Roof, hosted by JW3 and Jewish News. Thank you so much for being here. I'm the live performance programmer at JW3, and for those of you who don't know us, we are the biggest Jewish cultural and community center in the UK, although we host events for people around the world, such as tonight. We host comedy, performance, classes, and events, although I think we're at our best when we're celebrating Jewish arts and contributions to the cultural canon, and that's exactly what Fiddler on the Roof is. To Learn the Roof has been adored by fans around the world, and there are countless revivals and adaptations, although there's nothing quite like experiencing it for the first time. And for me, and I'm sure many others here tonight, that would have been on film. So tonight we celebrate 50 years since the film release of Fiddler on the Roof, and I just want to thank a few people that helped make tonight happen, including The Forward and Chai, um, who made that Lachai video that you just saw. That was great. Um, I also want to thank Bridget Grant from Jewish News for hosting tonight and the entire cast for being here. Thank you so much. Finally, please stick around to the end because we have a really special treat for you. I'm sure some of you are aware that there was a recent production of Fiddler on the Roof in Yiddish in New York. And tonight we have Joel Gray introducing a couple of members of the cast to sing a number from that production. So please stick around and enjoy the conversation. Thanks so much. Bye. And how do we keep our balance? That I can tell you in one word. Tradition! 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 How do I even begin to describe the joy and excitement I'm feeling right now? I'm about to bring together the cast of Fiddler on the Roof to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the movie. I must say I was shocked, and so were lots of other people, 
when we realised 50 years had passed since the release of the 1971 film directed by Norman Jewison. I was seven when the film came out, but like so many people, regardless of the age they were when they saw it, it continues to hold a big place in our hearts. Unlike so many movies that come and go at the box office, Fiddler on the Roof was a fixture from the moment it opened in 1971. And not just in the US and UK, but in countries everywhere. Japan, it ran for three years, and Spain for four. The appeal of Jerry Bock and Sheldon Harnick's musical on the stage is, of course, eternal, with countless new productions opening all the time, everywhere. But on stage, Anna Tevka is a backdrop. In the film, the shtetl has real heart. It breathes. For many of the cast, Fiddler was their first film, but the emotion and soulfulness they brought to those performances still resonate, and they always make us cry. The older you get, the more they make you cry. I'm going to do my best now not to cry, start getting teary, uh, as we start this event, hosted by Jewish News and JW3 in London, to welcome our first guests, Tevye's daughters, Zeitel, Hoddle, Hover, and Bielka. Oh, my gosh. That makes me cry. And you had to remind us that you were only seven. Thanks. <laughs> sorry about that. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm old now. What can I do? Time passes. Time passes. You look great. Uh, I mean, oh. it's so it's so good to see you all. And and just to introduce you individually, though, you have your names. I have um, older sister Rosalind Harris Zeitel, and Neva Small, who was Hover, Candy Bonstein, who was the baby of the group, Bielka, and of course. Michelle Marsh, our hoddle. Um, so I, I'm going to follow this in the Yenta matchmaker order of the rules for marriage. So I'm going to speak to the eldest first, Rosalind. Um, so good to see you. It really is. So good um, to see you. And when director Norman Jewison um, moved to London, I mean, rather to New York, um, you were already on stage in a production of Fiddler on the Roof on Broadway. You were yes. understudying Bette Midler, right? Yes, that's now. correct. Uh, but did that le lead naturally to you walking straight into this film role? No, no. Nothing I've ever done in my career or my life was followed by the rules. But actually, Bette, who was a dear, dear uh, friend at that time, and we used to hang out and go hear her sing at the African room. And one day she said to me backstage, Roz, did you audition for the film? And I said, no, my agent can't get me in. Um, I had a wonderful little agent, Francie Hidden, couldn't get me in. And Beth said, I'm not going to say everything she said. She just said five words, get your tush down there. And she gave me the address. And I had the courage to go down without an appointment, no agent, manager, and waited all day and said, please read me. I, I really am cital. And they said, come back tomorrow, kid. And I went and I read the next day. They said, get Jewison, he's at the hotel. And they brought him over. And I, uh, I remember singing all three parts of the daughters because I didn't know what else to do. I sang Matchmaker, I sang Huddle, I sang Hava. He said, look, sit on your hands, look over here and just sing to Yenta. And so I did. And about a month later, I got a call back and a month after that, I got the role. That's how I got the role. I yeah. love, I love all of your stories about about auditioning and so on. And <laughs> Michelle, I, Marsh, our 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 hoddle, uh, you were rather sneaky about getting your audition. I believe <laughs> I was sneaky. Is yes, that what you said? In, uh, yes, sneaky. <laughs> did you did you find your way into Samuel Goldwyn Studios? <laughs> well, what what happened is. Uh, I, I don't know. Should I really tell? All that? <laughs> I I was living with a boy up in in uh, in San Francisco, and um, and the show I was doing it. Your good man Charlie Brown had closed. I wasn't was out of work, um, and he was stage managing and all that. And he but he knew that they were. I'm going to tell you the story, that they were. Uh, <laughs> 
they were looking for understudies for the San Francisco production of O Calcutta. And I thought, oh, that's good. I won't ever have to go on. I'll be understudy. Um, they, uh, in the meantime, Joel broke up with me because he said, um, uh, <laughs> the next step is marrying you and I'm not ready to get married. A couple of oh, weeks later, I got a call and they said that they had fired the girl in the LA company in old Calcutta and would I go down there? Well, I, I couldn't get out of San Francisco fast enough, but Joel arranged for me to live with his aunt in Beverly Hills so I could do old Calcutta in LA. And she was connected because her husband was a producer. And she said, uh, they're casting Fiddler on the Roof. Um, and so she called and, and they said, well, have Michelle send her picture and resume into Samuel Goldwyn Studios. And Sandy, his aunt said, no, you take your picture and resume in person. So those were the days when you could just walk onto the studio lots. And I walked in, I met uh, his Norman Jewison secretary. And she said, well, he's already auditioned here and in New York and in London, he's in Israel right now, but uh, can you sing? Uh-huh. Can you dance? Uh-huh. <laughs> she said, okay, well, fine. Here, I'll take your picture and resume. About a week later, I got a call from Lynn Stallmaster, and he called me and the casting director, uh, and I read for him, and he said, okay, have these two scenes and these two songs memorized for tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Well, I knew the play because when I was in high school, I did a production of Tevye and His Daughters. And it was about the time that they were opening Fiddler on Broadway. And I thought, oh, how could they ruin such a beautiful story by making it into a musical? <laughs> <laughs> so I knew the story, uh, but I went out and bought the album so I could listen to the songs over and over and over again. And um, I went there the next day. I read Norman, you know, gave me some corrections. You know, I did the alteration. I worked, John Williams was there playing the piano to accompany me at the audition. And then the inevitable question was, so what have you been doing lately? Norman asked me. And I said, I'm in old Calcutta, but I hate it. <laughs> and Norman oh, leaned back and he looked at me and he said, I was there opening night. Hilly Elkins is a friend of mine. And I thought, I'm screwed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never gonna. <laughs> so a week later, I got a call that I was gonna be doing a screen test. And the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, I did. I think, I think I did three or four, three or four screen tests with different perchicks. It's amazing, really, to think that you you managed to play an orthodox uh, Eastern European girl after being in a <laughs> oh, Calcutta. It's I, quite I, 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 oh I know, I know. You know, and, and all the I, I have like you know this girl talk this thing. They all I never told them about oh, Calcutta. It's because I'm old now. I can talk about oh, Calcutta. You know. Yeah. <laughs> But I, it was like a taboo topic. Yeah. Aren't you a French origin? You're yes. forgiven. Okay, yes. so just is, is that okay? Is that okay? Lot, well, yeah, a lot so, freer. Than, oh. It was so contrary to my upbringing and who I was, and you know everything to do that play. But uh, you know, it's it was it's beautiful. We should point out that John Williams accompanied all, all of you on on the auditions because he was in fact. The musical director of the movie, which is he didn't just drop in; he wasn't just like a jobbing pianist. Um, uh, little Havana, Neva, up there. You were a, a stage veteran by the time you were ten, performing at the New York City Opera um, as as a little girl growing up. You know, a stone's throw from Broadway. How did you come about the part? Well. Um, much like Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Um, hi, Candy, <laughs> Roz. Uh, I, I love worked it. with your director from Old Calcutta, Jacques Levy, on an English-Yiddish musical, actually, called The Golden oh my Land. Goodness. Yeah. 
So um, we had our clothes on in that one, though. Um, <laughs> Please, well, oh but, God. <laughs> but anyway, um, I um, yes, it's true. I had been on Broadway. I played Alan King's daughter for two years. And I had been in wonderful Bob Merrill musical, who wrote Funny Girl. People, my, The musical I did was a, a version of The World of Henry Orient. Um, the movie Henry Orrit turned into a musical by Bob Merrill. So yes, I had done a lot and I was with a, a, a rather large agency at the time, except there was a very young agent there. He had recently graduated Wesleyan. His name is Rick Nisita. And he went on to be in all those mergers and CAA and, and his wife at the time was a casting director. And now his wife is a producer, um, film producer. Well, anyway, Rick Nasita, being young and starting out, approached it very seriously, and he met all the clients there that he didn't know, of which I was one. And I also was doing an off-Broadway play, and the play was called How Much, How Much, and the New York casting director, Richard Altman, yes. was the director of the play. So very often it's not what you know, it's who you know, and he kind of pushed for me, and then I, I too ended up in, in, in the offices of, of Lynn Stallmaster and Mr. Jewison and all those wonderful heroes of Hollywood. It's such a, it's lovely. And I mean, how did your family react? Because presumably you, you like they, your father, I know your father was close to Leonard Bernstein. And so did, were they excited when you got the part? Was there that genuine sense of excitement? Sure. My mother was a harpist. My mother was in the first graduating class at Juilliard in 1938 of harpists. And my father uh, was a friend of Lenny's father and Lenny Bernstein, Sam Bernstein, the father. And when Lenny wanted to come to New York to see shows, they would let him stay with my father. My father was just in between the two ages and my father would rent a piano for him. But as far as Fiddler on the Roof, my parents told me, this is going to be your calling card forever. And they, they were right. right. <laughs> I know, I know. I have to bring in Candy now because Candy, I know from talking to you that that you were the little girl. You were ten when you got this part, and by oh. all accounts, the whole of Northwest Jewish London came out in celebration. <laughs> Candy? Absolutely, there's Candy. <laughs> Look, there's Candy. Hard to believe. And here's here's another. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got them all too, though. Look at that one. That's on the um, premiere. Oh, my gosh. Oh, can you see? Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at uh, that. With Norman. Wow. Um, yeah, what an amazing experience for a 10 year old girl. Um, I'm so excited to see you all, honestly. <laughs> I can't believe it. Neva, I know that I had a very special bond with you. And do you remember when I came over to see you? How could I forget? <laughs> Except you were so haunting. <laughs> but she was only 11 or 10, 10 years old. <laughs> and Neva was no, only, Neva was 16, right? You were 16. 17, yeah, I turned 18. Uh huh. Okay. Oh, that's right. You know, and my sister had to be my guardian. Uh, <laughs> oh, but Norman was worried that and I, I don't was know old, whether that I was too old. He, I remember him looking to see if, if I had wrinkles because I was actually 23 and she supposed, <laughs> but all the things said I was 18. They, they lied in all the programs and everything. Because <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. he was worried that I was going to be yeah, too so old. Sorry. I was 23 too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we're, we're, we're close in age. So Candy, tell us about your story. How did you come to get the film? Well, I went to um, a stage school called Corona. It's not. Oh. It's not open anymore. Um, and I went there. My whole. I went there from when I was five till I was sixteen. And when I was nine, I went up for the audition, and it went on for a couple of months. Call back and call back and call back, and eventually, I got the part. And. I've got to say that it was the best thing that could ever have happened in my childhood. It's something that 
has followed me my whole life. You know, when people hear that I was the youngest daughter in Fiddle on the Roof in North London, they they can't believe it. Especially as you're all in the States, I'm the only one here. <laughs> that, that but I don't know whether um, I don't know whether Bridget told you, but I wrote a diary. I don't know if you can see that. Yes. It's a fabulous thing. Diary of, oh, oh, I have read it from cover. I yeah. read yeah. it from cover. A whole diary of every <laughs> single day on set. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it, 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 is, it is an extraordinary. I mean, the memorabilia that a lot of you have is amazing. And I know that um, Michelle has a where you live in Idlewild that you have, you know, forest fires. And, and Michelle has a box especially for evacuation in the event of such a fire or, you know, or something awful like that, that that box will be taken out and it's full of memorabilia from Fiddler wow. on the Roof. I have so many pictures. I have so yeah. many yeah. pictures, yeah. you know, I mean, just, yeah. Yeah. Wow. you know, here, they're, they're wow. beautiful. It's, it's a, a marvelous, and reading Candy's diary, Obviously, one of the people that gets a big mention in the diary, unbeknownst to him, is in fact the person who arrived and had to contend with so many daughters, uh, his daughters on set, uh, a student activist called Perchik, um, who talked his way into Tevye's home. And uh, for the role, Norman Jewison wanted someone who was dynamic, endearing, handsome, um, someone just like Paul Michael Glazer, who <laughs> I would I, like to welcome here now. A, can I ask a yeah. question? Uh, in, in all the programs Hi, when we were doing it, uh, you were call, we called you Michael. Yeah, <laughs> well, my name was my my. That's a whole long story. My 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 real name <laughs> is yeah. uh, Paul Manfred Glazer. And when I was wow. working in New York and I was doing under fives on soap operas and whatnot, the, uh, the, the, I was informed by, the, uh, by Actors Equity that I had to change my name, that there was a Paul Glaze. Oh, that's right. His real name was Paul Grote. But he was on the arbitration committee, so I didn't just have a prayer. <laughs> so I boiled it down to Michael and Daniel. But I thought the diphthong and Michael were, went better with Glazer. So I meant, okay, Michael Glazer. And then course by the time I got to Hollywood I was so tired of being called Mike oh <laughs> so, ah. and then I picked up the so you, you prefer, you, you prefer Paul then yeah by yeah. the way Paul my father's name was Paul and Paul Mann uh Laser Wolf the Butcher who wound up being my brother-in-law in real life who married my sister he didn't marry this title but he married the older sister in real life. Yeah, this is <laughs> so lovely. I love the name. And my best well, friend today, her his name is Paul. Paul has always been a name for good. I never right. knew a bad Paul. I don't know why, but I never <laughs> met a bad Paul. Uh, well, we've got a really good <laughs> one here now. Sweet. Isn't that sweet of you, Rosalind? <laughs> uh, True. Got a, I don't know you that long, long. this long ago. So. <laughs> um, well, anyways, I anyways, I so I... I Pick up the, I was doing a Kojak. I was doing a uh, guest shot on a Kojak, and I pick up the trades on the set, and it said, Paul Glazer dead. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was Paul Grote, but his, his, his acting name was Paul Glazer. So I <laughs> called my agent, and I said, we have a name change. <laughs> and I just tagged my name back on it, and that's how that happened. That's great. Um, uh, when was the last time you all saw? Well, I know that obviously Candy's been in London, but I mean, when was the last time you saw each other, all of you? I saw Michelle. Yes. At the I reunion uh, for Norman and uh, and Ozzy, Ozzy, the cameraman, Ozzy uh, uh, Morris. M Morris, Morris, Ozzy Morris. Oz Oz yeah, yeah Ozzy Morris. And I'll just say that I, Neva, and I did an engagement for the fiftieth anniversary of the play, the play. Yes, at Town did, Hall. Yeah. And then um, in 20, was it 2018, they had the opening of the Yiddish Fiddler. And I was there and they flew Topol in 
So we all sat together, Sheldon Harnick and Topol and myself and uh, Joel Gray, who directed that production. Neva was off working, I believe, because I asked. And I think yeah. that you were out of town. But yeah, but I haven't seen Paul in since the film. Oh, Long wow. And, Rosalind, and it feels like Rosalind yesterday. And I recorded. We recorded the oh, trio right. on the English Yiddish Fiddler on the Roof. That's right. The song that was cut from the original show. Um, to Marry for Love. Maker, to Marry mm -hmm. for Love. So we yeah. did the trio version. It's an add on on the bonus track for the Yiddish version, which was and so Alexandra successful. Silber played side, uh, played, um, no, she played Huddle. But on Broadway, she played Seitel in the 2015 revival. Right. So I'm going to bring you back. Yeah. I'm going to bring you back to the movie because that's why we're okay. here. I mean, yeah. that, that we're celebrating 50 years of the film. And yes. I know for a fact that, Paul, um, you have got blue eyes. And yet for the movie, everyone thought you had brown eyes. They thought you were brown eyed. Jewish boy, because Norman Jewison didn't think Jews could have blue eyes. Is this true? Well, that's kind of, I don't know whether he didn't think we could have blue eyes, but he didn't feel like they were the prevalent color. And uh, uh, so he, had, he had both of us between the end of the rehearsal and the beginning of shooting uh, fitted with brown contact lenses. Really? And I think, I think he thought that I would look maybe more Jewish if I had brown eyes. You were able to tolerate it, Paul. I wish I had known. I wish I had known. I could because what all he got from me with the contact lenses was this, you know, yeah. just squinting. So I didn't I, have to. I and those. then come to find out, Roz and I have the exact same eyes. Yeah, Paul mm -hmm. Mann, Laser Wolf has blue eyes. That's right. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so, so that was. And there were a lot of screen close-ups with just the eyes. Just if the you eyes, remember. Yeah. 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 On the other hand, and then it was always the close up of us with the eyes. Yeah. 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 So, but Paul, you were you were on Broadway and you were also in a in a TV soap when you when Norman Jewison saw you. And um what do you think it was that he fell in love with? I have no idea because yeah, I was doing a soap opera during the day. I'd hit the trifecta. I was doing a soap opera in the day and a Broadway show at night. And my agent called and said that uh, Lynn Stallmaster suggested me. And I said, so I, I, I'd been dating a girl because we were in uh, it's Man of the Glass Booth. And our, our stage door was next to the stage door for uh, Fiddler. But I never saw the show. But I used to go back there because that curtain rang down earlier. And so I'd go to pick her up so I didn't watch the last five minutes or so, and then uh, like that. And uh, so I said, send me the side. Send me, send me something to read. So I read it, and I called him. I said, I'm too old for this. And he said, and they said, well, we, they just want you to come and read. I said, okay. So I went to the Sherry Netherlands Hotel, and I knocked on the door, and Norman opened it, and he said, who are you? I said, Michael Glazer. He said, the pear check? I said, yeah. He says, you're too old for this. <laughs> wow. I, I said, you're not going to hear any argument from me. <laughs> he said, well, I got 45 minutes to kill, so come on in and read. <laughs> so I, so I, I came in and I uh, started to read. And at one point, I picked him up and danced him around the room. And uh, and then they let me know that they were going to fly me out to screen test in Hollywood. What was the chemistry like with you and Michelle when you first did a reading together? What, when we were rehearsing? Well, when you first met, when you first did a read through as Hoddle and Perchick. During the screen test? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Well, he was my favorite. <laughs> Aren't, you sweet? Aren't you sweet? Oh, no, it's true. It's true. Oh, did you know I, I, how many times you were in Candy's in Candy's diary? You're in Candy's diary. The diary that she was giving us homework <laughs> to school is full of mentions of you. You feature large in her diary. Wow. <laughs> I didn't school get girl it. Schoolgirl crush. What? Schoolgirl crush. Listen, I had a crush on Topol. You had a crush on me. <laughs> 
You had a crush on me? Tell me this, yeah. I, I had a cr but I wanted to say something very quickly. You were in my diary a lot. Yeah. I'm talking to a title. I'm talking to Candy, okay? Okay, go ahead. I, I want to know. <laughs> You got to understand, five months with these ladies in Yugoslavia was <laughs> was a real, real enjoyable trip, and they were wonderful. Those were the days. Those were the days when the studio would keep everybody on location, rather than to take a chance that uh, something would happen to them, or whatever. And uh, so that's what they did. And Yugoslavian cooking, withstanding, everything worked out fine. Well, Aww. Paul, you know, I just want to interject saying funny. When I got the script, I was the only one of the cast, I believe, that I know of that did not have a screen test. And um, I was cast in such an unusual way. When I got the script, however, I burst into tears and I called my mom and I said, Mommy, I know why I got the part and I didn't have a screen test. And she, because I'm the only one, I thought it was such a great thing to have a screen test. It was very glamorous, right? And she said, why are you crying, Rosie? I said, well, it, it says Seitel in the cast list. It says Seitel, a homely girl. And I knew they didn't have to see me in a screen test to know I was homely. So they just Aww. Aww. <laughs> She Aww. said, wait, wait, wait. And she looked, and I went up to Westchester's here. She goes, it says a homey girl, a homey girl, a home girl, a family girl. And I was so, you know, relieved. That's oh, <laughs> because it was a homely girl. Yeah. You, you were out in Yugoslavia. I mean, this was a long film to make. It was a, a year's worth of, of because it was a big musical in that time. Things took a long time. And you went through all sorts of weather. Um, you had lots of sunshine in the summer. And then uh, I gather it was the, the snow that you were waiting for, for the winter to come and be able to come. film. The freezing, yeah. Tell us about that. Tell well, us about it, it didn't. Well, we ended up having to go. Number one, the interiors were going to be inside of this big dome that had, uh, bl you know, blowers to keep it up. And it, you found that you, you, you talked to this side of the stage, it would carry, and you could hear the voice, even if you were whispering. They realized they couldn't shoot any of the interiors. In Yugoslavia, we went back to London to shoot all the interiors. And do you um, remember, Michelle, that it was winter and it was very cold, but Norman was such a perfectionist with the lighting. And he had them, and we didn't know we could do this. I was so glad we were indoors, none of the weather factors. And then he had them remove the roof of Pinewood Studios because in those days the roof could be uplifted to get natural lighting. So I was always cold anyway. Anyway. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so when we, we went back to shoot Far From the Home I Love with just a skeleton yeah. crew to shoot that, we spent like 10 days waiting for the sun to go away. I mean, to have a cloudy oh day at gosh. least. Wow. Just, we just hung out on the, on the set just waiting. And so well, you, know, you know, the uh, they chose Yugoslavia because <clears throat> they wanted snow. Nope. And they hadn't had any snow in England, and they hadn't snow in place. So they chose Yugoslavia, and of course, we came to ship the film, and there was no snow. So they Indian brought summer. in 30,000 pounds of uh, Carrara marble dust <laughs> to make it look like snow. And uh, the interesting thing was the temperature dropped 20 degrees as soon as they did that. That's what it felt like. Yeah. But do you guys remember? Going from Malagaritsa into Anatevka, there was until they put the snow in. Yeah. There's no difference. <laughs> there's no difference. Oh, that, there you are, amazing. Michael. Uh, oh, yeah. They've got yeah. lots of. They've got the uh, your 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 female co-stars have lots of uh, memorabilia, Michael. Um, you famously at the wedding pulled down the rope um, at Zeitel. Uh, a Zytel and Mottle's wedding. Um, what kind of dancer were you? What kind of what? What kind of dancer are you, were, were you then? You know, <laughs> Norman, they, and, and we came to London first before we went to Yugoslavia. We did pre-recording 
I had a song which Neva mentioned that I did. It wasn't filmed, but we recorded it. And uh, and I worked with the dancers. Sammy Bay was that the dance? Sammy Bay, yeah. Sammy Bay's. So I worked with uh, the dancers. He was Tom Abbott's assistant originally. Right. right. So right. so so I worked with Sammy and everything. We worked and worked and worked and worked. I get to Yugoslavia. Comes the day of the shoot of the on the Riverside with Michelle. And Norman says, "Well, let me see the dance." So it's okay. So they put the music <laughs> on, and Michelle and I start dancing, and. Norman stops and says, he looks like a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, that's what you get. Um, uh, well, yeah, oh, bless. Oh, oh, no, that was lovely. It's one of our, oh, it's God. a favorite moment, but there are so many favorite moments. And uh, not least of all, a particular, I remember as a child being terrified. I certainly know that, that um, uh, that Heim Topple's own children were terrified when they came on to the set to watch it being filmed. And that was the dream sequence. Um, I know that all of you went to all the premieres. And, um, and of course, um, um, what, uh, I, this particular person didn't get to go all the, to the premieres, but she did get to be suspended over a graveyard at Pinewood. And so it gives me huge pleasure to welcome now the least likely member of the cast, certainly for us in this country, and that is Ruth Maddock. I'd love to welcome you now. <laughs> Ruth, um, you uh, didn't have the same journey as everybody else to the film. Um, there you are uh, in Pinewood, 15 foot above ground, above a graveyard. Um, tell us how you got to be there. Well, I did um, an open audition for uh, the part of Fruma Sarah, and um, I got it out of 500 women. Uh, and I was thrilled a bit. Didn't see Mr. Jewiston until the very, very last audition, which was three, um, no, four, sorry, four um, girls and myself making five. And um, I got the part. But the interesting thing is, Nobody told me about this 15 foot being in the air because when I went to see the actual production in the West End, I think the woman playing through Macera was on somebody's shoulders. So anyway, um, nobody told me about this until I had to go along and get um, fitted for a harness. Well, fortunately, it was 50 years ago, and um, I had a lot of bottle in those days. I don't quite know if I'd have the bottle to do it now. So I got this part in this wonderful film, this wonderful production. But what, for me, was the most wonderful thing about the whole production was that it was the, I, I want to call it gemütlich, it, this um, wonderful um, uh, uh, um, story, this um, lovely, lovely um, heart that was in it. And that's what I got from playing those 10 weeks. Because ten, I was on that, that for 10 weeks and they actually thought they were going to get an Oscar for that scene, uh, uh, special effects because it was very hard to do. There were lots of special effects in it, apart from being dropped by Inky, the, the guy that was doing the, um, the piano wires. Um, but it was fine. I mean, he didn't, you know, it, he didn't hurt me, so I was all right. But I was it, was, it was just the wonderful way that everybody enveloped you into uh, this wonderful Jewish family. And I've remained actually in it ever since because um, after that, although I never got any um, parts after it for quite a long time, uh, I have played quite a few Jewish people after that, um, although I'm purely Welsh. Uh, but, you know, when I hear... The um, the Yiddish. It sounds so like Welsh. 
<laughs> See, it, it, we can, it's so like the Welsh. You know, obviously she was completely in disguise playing from a Sarah, this, this legendary character that, you know, scared the life out of children. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, we all yeah. still remember it. But um, it's, you say you never got any work from it. Um, mm. um, can I just say, how did it act as, as a launch pad for any of you in terms of work? What work you got um, directly after finishing the film? It's huge success. Everybody had seen you, knew how talented you were, but how did it work for you as a launch pad for your careers? Can I start with um, Roz? Well, you know, it's funny because I did like eight productions of Funny Girl after that, but um, I, it really, I was with a big agency. I was with, uh, I, because I, after the film, I called this big agency and I said, um, do you want to handle me? You know, I, I, and they said, sure. But they really weren't committed to me. And because I was so Semitic, they weren't interested. Every job I ever got, I think I went to an open call. I'd go on my own. Um, it did not, I, I kind of knew. And because I'm a Capricorn, I know those of you that aren't into astrology, but I'm a very level-headed, practical person. And I said, look, the role I play is of a sweet, lovely person. It's not, we call in New York, TNA. You know, it was not a sexy role. It was not, and I went, this is not going to get me a film career. In those days, I think you have to be a beauty, you know, and that was my thinking. So I was never disappointed. I didn't really expect it. And um, I, I worked in the theater a lot, but I yeah. didn't get film, TV. I was unusual looking, and I wasn't going to change my face. Oh, I like my face. Good thing to, good thing <laughs> to. Neva, what about you? How did it work for you after the movie? Um, well, I, uh, I was very committed to going to college, and I had taken off actually my last year of high school to make the film and uh, uh, had to go before the surrogate court of New York to get permission and have a guardian. My sister came as my guardian. And uh, so I did go to college, but I did lots of Broadway. I did a wonderful musical set in the Yiddish theater where I played. I was the leading lady opposite uh, Robert Preston. I had five songs and the Prince of Grand Street was called. And I did lots of, lots of plays and musicals, a couple more films and uh, some television and you know, I continued to work. I became a mother and I, um, a grandmother and about to be a grandmother again. Mazel tov. Day, you know? <laughs> I should so. say a blessing on your head, mazel tov. Thank mazel tov. you. It's been a full <laughs> night. Yeah. And what about Paul? Paul, I know that obviously for, from this, you kind of got put off filmmaking. Oh, that was the, the biggest star, no doubt. It, you got kind of put off filmmaking after you did it in a way because... You were you were gonna you were gonna be a director. How was the experience? What did it do for you? For me, <clears throat> you're asking me. Yes, sure. Well, you know the interesting thing was that after I finished Fiddler, I <clears throat> it was the first film I'd ever been in, and I was really put off by how much ego was involved. So I took myself off to Rome, and I decided to become a writer. And I went to Rome and I wrote a screenplay and messed around a bit. And then I came back out. I came to New York and I had a girlfriend at the time. And I said, how would you like to drive out to California for just like a week and a half and drive across country? And we'll, the, the Fiddler's opening there. We'll go to the opening, blah, blah, blah. I ended up staying a year and a half. And uh, and then I went back to New York, and I lasted five months. I got another soap opera. I was looking for a Broadway show, and I said I, I just couldn't handle it. I just it was, I, I didn't like it. And so I went back to California, and push comes to shove, I ended up doing a, a movie that I thought would never be a series, and <laughs> wasn't I wrong? And so uh, <laughs> the only way that I could possibly uh, rationalize or get through it was uh, to focus on directing. So the last three years of the series, I basically focused on directing. 
And then when I finished I uh, the series, I stopped acting for 10 years. And, uh, and then I uh, uh, finally realized some directing, uh, you know, credits. And uh, then I got back in touch with how much fun acting could be when it wasn't attached to uh, my ego. So, um, you know, I, I don't know if I've answered your question, but yeah, that's you, you have in a roundabout way, Michelle. Though Michelle, your your huddle. How did it go for you afterwards? Okay, I'm unmuted now. <laughs> um, well, I was able to get a you know a powerful agency uh, to represent me, and I went did a, a number of the television shows. But the thing that was interesting was a lot of times I would go in for something and they said, but you're not ethnic enough. <laughs> the irony. Yeah, I mean, because I did Fiddler, they expected me to look, I, I don't know, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, that was that was the thing that I faced. But, but you know, I, I did yeah. television roles and it was only a little bit later that I started to do some theater, you know, uh, at the Arizona Theater Company and... Oh, I was in Tamara for Tamara, Tamara, yeah, for on and off for nine years, you know, so I could do television shows and I could do the play. I could, you know, back and forth. Yeah. I, I you know, Bridget, I, Bridget, I just want to add that it, it sounds like I go to all these open calls. I had agent submissions and I think that having a credit like that on a resume uh, might get you in the door to an audition. And I did do American Shakespeare Festival. I got to understudy Glenn Close and Jane Alexander in a couple of plays. So I, I did get roles like that. But in terms of having a big career from it, no. That's but the all thing is, though, it doesn't really matter because you all yeah. are significant and important to us. I saw Paul perform um, Tevye role um, in London. It was wonderful, his performance here. Um, and it can't have gone unnoticed to any of you, but there is a cast member missing who is probably the, the person that's most in people's minds when you talk about Fiddler on the Roof, and that's Heim Topol. Um, and, uh, you know, it gives me a great chance to introduce his daughter, Adi, who is with us tonight. Um, oh, hi there. Sorry we've kept you waiting so long. Um, I'll suffer in silence. Oh, <laughs> okay. so lovely. We were supposed to be joined by um, a, a Anat. Sister, uh, sister Anat, who is in um, Los Angeles, but she's a, a fantastic, she's a veteran nurse, and that's um, uh, Topol's oldest daughter. I say Topol, you don't call your dad Topol, that's for sure. No. Um, he's not yeah. here with us tonight. Um, and obviously he is our, he, he's the lifeblood of Fiddler for, for all of us. Um, how is he? He's uh, physically very well. Um, but uh, about a year ago, he fell down a whole set of stairs and hit his head on the right hand side, which is where you form your words. So he finds it really difficult to talk. He knows what he wants to say, but he can't say it. So we preferred he wouldn't be seen that way. Um, but uh, he's a happy bunny. He's having fun, walking on the beach every day, like 10 he kilometers. Yeah, he does look He looks fantastic. amazing. He's like a copy paste. There's Omar, my brother, and they both walk together every day, the twins. They're... They're amazing. And by the way, Paul, all I remember from the filming is Friday night dinners sitting on your lap. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to the rest of the girls that all they, they remember is Paul Michael Glazer. That's what I remember. You and, and uh, what was the name of the, the billy goat? Chester. 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 Chester.
I named him. Like, he was my baby. Didn't, <laughs> my that, goat, didn't that goat by accident bite into an electro electric cable? I think so. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> before I, before I, while I still have a chance, give Topol my love, would you? I will. I all will. Our love. You. All yes. our love. All, 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 all of our love. love for him. Yes. Yeah. I. Yeah. Last time I, I saw him, all of us. he came and visited me in my house in Santa Monica. Oh, oh, and that lives not far away from you then. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and so, anyways, but uh, nothing but just give him my love. I will. And, and that, so, yeah. And that was um, was in the film, as was Omar. They were they had their little cameos as as uh, Yenta's uh, future shidduchs, as it were. And and you were on the set yourself. As, uh, I mean, there are loads of pictures of you on the set of the movie. Oh, well, I have um, a wonderful picture of me on the set. And now you'll understand why they didn't bring me that much to the set, because. <laughs> um, that's me on the set. Let's see if I can get that scene. Poking your tongue oh. out. Oh, my God. Oh, oh you were such yeah. a little pipsqueak. Oh, my Yeah, God. I was four. <laughs> four. So, for me, the goat was massive. But, uh, <laughs> you know, they keep I, saying, by the way, I'm the oldest. I was the eldest daughter. Eldest. Now eldest. I'm the oldest, but I was the eldest. <laughs> yeah, I'm the baby. So, <laughs> but, yeah, you, but you were also, you played, I mean, you played um, Hava opposite your dad at the London Palladium. So and I, I mean, played title in uh, the tour in Israel. Yeah. So I, 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 we must all be able to sing. Everyone here can sing all the parts. That's it, can't you? I mean, and in yeah. many languages. I want to play Tevya. Come on. <laughs> okay, fine. If, if you're Tevi, I can do Golda because I can't do Golda opposite Topol. Okay, Just that's fine. It doesn't Thank work. You, you okay. can't play your father's wife. Well, <laughs> when, when Nadia, when I uh, uh, did the uh, the uh, the tour of, of Fiddler, uh, I, I made up a a uh, an expression. You know, Tevi has his. Uh, the good book says. He's always saying the good book says the good book says, and 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 maybe you'll share this with Topol because they'll get a kick out of it. The way I related to it was I was playing Perchik forty years later. Um, anyways, but it's a yeah, I never got to use this in the show. I was hoping that someone would like go up and I, but I was the only one that ever went up. So, <laughs> uh, and the saying was, as the good book says, if you wait long enough, you don't have to wait any longer. <laughs> yeah nice <laughs> nice one <laughs> I, like that. I like that it's funny because i remember uh, talking to michelle you were saying that of course ruth mentioned that everyone on the set was jewish which is in fact not true because you weren't and i i gather that you had to do some you did some serious homework didn't you on on trying to be a jew Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I studied about Jewish mysticism and the religion and all of that. And and I, I, I was so sure that I he would get rid of me at the very beginning. But I, uh, because I wasn't Jewish, you know, um, but. But you are I, now. And that's I, the important well, thing. <laughs> you know what? I was, I ended up, you know, Joel had split up with me and that's why it was like, yeah, it was like a gift. Who uh, I don't think I would have ever been in Los Angeles, you know. Anyway, but he was Jewish. We ended up getting married, uh, <laughs> and then I am now married to another Jewish man. So I, I'm an honorary. Save one Jew. for me, please. Save one for me. Set the tone with that chick for you. <laughs> Except, um, I said that Paul, you 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 set Michelle on the path that she was going on. She first meets a social activist student in the middle of uh, Anatevka, and then goes on and marries two Jewish men. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it right? Isn't it right? I, I, I actually have a favorite expression that I use all the time, which is, "Everybody's Jewish. There's just some people that don't know it." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is it true? Is it true that they basically <laughs> rented a village in in Yugoslavia, made everyone grow their beards, put 
head scarfs on them and they all were, you know, portraying Jewish characters. Yeah, basically. So everybody's Jewish. Everybody's Jewish. You just everybody. put a head scarf, a beard, and they're all Jewish. But everybody is, uh, everybody is Jewish. Oh, yeah. well, I, I gather that the cinematographer, um, um, was that, that was, uh, um, Ozzy, was Ozzy that Ozzy? Yeah. yeah. That he went around with a tape recorder of the soundtrack of Fiddler on the Roof and played it in different villages all around that part of the world, um, and to see which one felt right for the setting, but then still ended up building the entire set of Anna Tevka in Zagreb anyway. That's what it was. Uh, you know, I, I know that you can sing um, in various languages the show because Roz and Neva did it in Yiddish. And um, uh, obviously Michelle, Candy, Paul can do it in English. And and Adi, you can do it in Hebrew. Can you do it in Hebrew? In Hebrew? What is matchmaker, matchmaker in Hebrew? Yente ho yente. Yente ho yente. Yente ho yente mitzili. Oh, you think I remember the lyrics? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's been ages. I've got what it. I've it? got it. Go on. Yente ho yente mitzili ben zug shabchili shidu. Zav gili vubug Yente ho yente Higia hazman Mitzili sof sof Chatan Or papa Make him a scholar Or mama Make him rich as a king For me well I wouldn't holler If he were as handsome as anything Matchmaker, matchmaker Make me a match, me a match. If you had to say what your single lasting memory of that whole experience was individually, um, I, I would love to hear that now. And I'm sure everyone that watches this would want to. What did you take away as your lasting memory of making Fiddler on the Roof, the movie, 50 years ago? Shall we start with Neva? I Thank you. I revisit the material in so many ways always saluting uh, Sholem Aleichem because he was the man with the pencil and Mark Chagall, that's how we got our Fiddler on the Roof. And of course, Jerry Bach, who was influenced by his grandmother who sang folk songs, who lived with him and our wonderful, very much alive Sheldon Harnick. So for me, it's all about the writers and the creators and the life that the material has from high schools to Hebrew schools to Japan to we did a world tour. So that's what it's about for me, as my parents said. Calling card forever and salute to the creators and the people that have enjoyed it and done the roles in their high schools and everywhere else. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, Max Lukowski's film, I mean, uh, The Fiddler, Miracle of Mil Miracles, is a wonderful tribute to yeah. the film and to every aspect of the making of this. So, so, and um, Roz, what's your lasting memory of the experience? You know, uh, uh, it's so interesting to me. It's just an adjunct to my life. It's family. It's it, whether it's a film family or my family. It, it was very much my life, Fiddler on the Roof. It was very much how I was in my family. And I just think it's so universal that I, I just think of it as a part of my history, my life. And as Neva said, the brilliance of, of the songs and the writing and that it moves the soul of the nation, of, of a world. It really is just, um, it's a natural part of my me, my life. 
And I don't make a distinction between real life and the play and the film because it's all connected. And that's why the world is connected to Fiddler on the Roof. Well, it feels mm. that way for me. Um, Michelle? Well, I have to agree with both of you, Neva and Roz. Uh, it's, it changed my life. It opened up my life. Um, and it lives with me still today. It, it does. Oh, bless. And, and Candy, you were so little. Did it make a huge impact on your life? Yes. <laughs> yes, it did, because from where I am in London, there were, it was such a special thing for a nice little Jewish girl to get the part of the youngest daughter. Um, it, it's carried me through my whole life, really. Um, people, when they hear the film, are amazed just amazed that a London girl was in that film. So, yeah, it stayed with me forever. And oh. all the memorabilia and everything has been, is so special. Oh, and, and, um, and Paul, I mean, it, it, yeah, well, we've said, I mean, is there one little thing that you think, because I know you, you found it arduous at times, although you played a lot of tennis by all accounts as well. Did you, is there one little thing that you thought, yeah, every time there's a little bit of it that melts your heart? Well, I got to say that playing Tevia in the musical was probably the best role I've ever played. Uh, it was, I felt like I was born to play it. So if Perchik was a prelude to that, uh, so be it. Uh, you know, I, it's, hard to, it's hard to boil it down to, to one word. It's, a, it's, it's such a huge journey. I mean, everything everybody's saying is totally true and, and accurate. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's a melange of the whole experience. It's, it's uh, the Jewish roots. It's the, uh, uh, it's the whole event of making a movie, which is uh, in and of itself, you know, a, a big undertaking and and uh, and big experience for anybody who was our age. And we were all young, and we were all very impressionable, and uh, and thought we, uh, you know, we, we knew what was what. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's a. Uh, it was undoubtedly, you know, it undoubtedly had a, a tremendous influence on me. Uh, I don't know that I can articulate all the ways it, it influenced me, but... Uh, that was pretty good. That was good. Yes. Because uh, obviously you played from a Sarah's iconic role, um, and then you went into yes. Heidi High, which yes. for this country is, is you know, you, you played an iconic role in that show. Um, do you, is there one... Is there, is there one little bit of Fiddler that's stuck in your head forever? So what I will take away from that incredible experience um, was the warmth, the love that was on that set. Because Mr. Jewison not only took my hand, because he knew it was my first, you know, um, big part, really. He took my hand and guided me, and so did Topol. Topol was wonderful to me. So I wasn't nervous. It was just the love that was there. And it was one of the very last scenes to be done, I believe, um, filmed. So it was very special for them all because they had been through this magical uh, experience. I'm thinking that um, I was just thinking about all these lovely, lovely <laughs> anecdotes. Um, Richard, um, yes. I just want to say that, you know, the film goes on forever because what we all, I think what I'm left with is to love human beings, just to love one another, whether it's family or your neighbor or the world. But um, that's, I, I am committed to making a difference on this planet. And Fiddler has been a great source of connectedness and relationship with everyone I meet so that I, I have some kind of, you know, leverage with people. And it's very impactful. 
but my goal is just to have a world united so that we can. I want to, I want to tell you on that point that yeah. when my father, when my father did Fiddler in Japan, yeah. on the way there, we were like, you know, it's going to mean absolutely nothing to them. First of all, I want to tell you subtitles ruin jokes. <laughs> they laugh before the punchline. You learn to say the line really quickly. That's one thing. The other thing is they were bawling their eyes out. They were crying and and we were like, why do they care about Fiddler on the Roof? Tradition, matchmaking, the whole thing completely spoke to them. And then there were Korean people there and they were transferred and they, all the wars come. Oh my God, it was so relevant. We were like, yeah. okay, yeah. it works. It's unbelievable. It works almost everywhere. Oh. And it's very weird to see yourself doing a, 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 a part, that's what my father used to say, in all languages. Because they've dubbed Fiddler. To all languages, and he saw himself in German, in Japanese, in Italian, and it's like so weird. It's and there's so only weird. one do, language. Do you remember, there's do only you remember one language, language, and that yeah. is yeah. love. He's facing the biggest crunching problems of being a parent, being a husband. They're really hitting. How can I hope to make you understand why I do? What I do, why I must travel to a distant land, far from the home I love. He doesn't speak. She sings the song there, and he is her with a song. Understand every single feeling that she has, and 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 he knows that he won't see her anymore. Here in the home. My love. And this is for me. For me, this is the most uh, hurting uh, place in the, in, in the film, in the, in the play. But he's leaving the home, my love. Settled long ago, I must go. I must go. And to sit there with the hodl in the station, that was probably the last scene that we shot. And it's it stayed in my head, my heart, for years, that scene. You are the cast. AD, I just want to, we all want to wish your dad, you know, extreme love. And to also mention that I know the charity work, Jordan River Village, that he is so committed to in Israel. And that yeah. Paul, um, your, your um, Elizabeth Glazer uh, AIDS Foundation that you work so hard for in Los Angeles, that people should definitely think about that. And, um, Again, family, a continued love. Thank you all yeah. so, so much. Thank you. Thank you, Bridget. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for putting the calls in the game. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, that was really amazing. Thank you so much to Bridget and for the cast for that wonderful conversation. That was really special, and I can't wait to rewatch the film yet again after that. Uh, and now I take you to Joel Gray for the final number of tonight. Uh, and a big thank you to Adam Lonson for Theatrical Solutions and folks being Yiddish Theatre in New York for helping put this together. I hope you had a great time and I hope to see you back at JW3, whether online or in person soon. Thanks, bye. Good evening, I'm Joel Gray, the director of the recent New York production of Fiddler on the Roof. 
I'm here to introduce you to our Tevya and our Golda, Stephen Skybell and Jennifer Babiak. In the original company, in the original production of Fiddler, they played this love song at the end of the show between Tevya and Golda, Do You Love Me?, as a comedy number. I never quite understood it, but it was a choice. Actually, my choice was to tell the story as a love song. And here they are, the wonderful Stephen Skybell as Tevya and Jennifer Babiak as Golda. Do you love me? Er is a guter Bocher, Golda. Er gefällt mir. They all kulom hodl. Wie steht dort geschrieben? O oh, hafti. Er will sie. Sie will ihm. To was kommen tons? Es ist a neue Welt. A neue Welt. Liebe. Golda. Liebst mich? Seltsam. Sieh ich was? Liebst mich seltsam? Sieh ich lieb dich. Für ein Töchter zu der Kuppe und es kocht bei uns in Häus. Bis schon ganz gut verdreht, geh in Stub, schlaf sich heus. Mit Stammeleid zu von morgen. Golde, ich will dir fragen eine Frage. Liebst mich, Serze? Bist ein Narr? Ich weiß, ob er liebst mich, Serze. Sich lieb dich. Vor 25 Jahren, wo's quasch dein Wäsch, schreib und putz, töpf und mesch. Chode weg in der Chmelk die Kuh, noch 25 Jahre, wo die Liebe die Reiner du. Golde, wenn ich ob dir der Sen in a lang weiß Chuppe kleid, Zappel dick, ich bin verschämt. Und mein Herz hat geklemmt. Sagt mein Tate und mein Mame, als mit Lieben sich misstame. Der Riebe frag ich Gold. Liebst mich, Serze? Ich bin dein Weib. Ich weiß, ob er liebst mich, Serze. Sich lieb ihm. Es ist 25 Jahre, wo es klebt mit ihm. Ich esse mit ihm, ich passt mit ihm. Alles mit ihm, bei Nacht, bei Tag. Ist das nicht Liebe so? Liebst mich Tage. Doch sich mir das so. Es dach sich mir, als ich lieb dich, euch. Es ist heim kein Gillig nicht, Gott, es ist allzeit. Noch 25 Jahre. Gut, als man will. To life.
Let's drink a toast too. <laughs> Whatever. Oh.